Today I'm going to talk really quickly about the taxes related to employee stock purchase plans or ESPPs when you sell shares that you purchased from one of these, these plans. Now it's very important to understand the tax consequences because that plays a big role within your financial plan and planning for your future. And you don't want to get hit with nasty tax surprises um, whenever you go to sell shares. So it makes this really important to understand how they're taxed, when they're taxed, so you can make proactive planning moves when it comes to selling shares from your ESPP plan. So I'm going to go through a blog post that I wrote and go through a couple of examples that can help break down the taxes for you and then show you a quick flow chart that I created that can quickly help you determine the tax consequences or how your ESPP shares would be taxed upon sale. So let's jump in. Okay, so here's the blog post that I wrote about ESPP taxes and it breaks down a couple different scenarios which we're going to briefly talk about and then I'm going to show the flow chart that I created that can help you determine the tax consequences when you sell shares in an employee stock purchase plan. So a couple considerations that this blog post starts with, you can check these out. We're not going to cover those in the video. I really want to talk about the tax consequences when you sell shares that you purchased in an ESPP. Now there's two dispositions when you sell shares in an, that are from an ESPP plan. Uh, you have a qualifying disposition, which typically receives more favorable tax treatment. And then you have disqualifying dispositions, which we're also going to talk about, which isn't worse or isn't better than qualifying disposition. It just, they're just taxed differently. So depending on what fits with your financial plan, you know, that's always the first thing you want to consider what fits within your finances, then determine the taxes and how you can potentially optimize taxes and pay less to uncle Sam. So under a qualifying disposition, there's two things you want to look at with your ESPP shares. One, the shares must be sold at least one year from the purchase date. And then second, the shares must be sold at least two years from the offering date. So if both of those things are met, your shares are then what's called a qualifying disposition. And that simply means that they receive capital gains rates on the majority of it. So the majority of the shares are taxed at a more favorable rate. And I also break down an example here, which I'm not going to go into the details of it because this example is probably a little easier to read and, and study and look at to kind of grasp how it's taxed. But these are very important dates that you want to consider with your uh, ESPP is, is things I just discussed, such as the offering date, the purchase date, and then uh, the date of sale or the, the share price on the sale. Those are, those are very important dates to, to know. So in this example, um, you know, if we look at all these, uh, these price scenarios and then this person is, is in the 24% tax bracket, 15% long-term gains. In this situation, um, the total tax would be 1,566 and we're gonna compare that to what the same uh, situation is but in a disqualifying disposition is below. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and we can go ahead and discuss that as well. But in a disqualifying disposition, I give two different examples. And that's because the disqualifying uh, disposition, let's say you hold the stock for less than two years after the offering date, but you hold it more than one year from the date you purchase it. That's going to, some of that is going to be considered long-term capital gains because of that one year that you held it, you held it one year after the date of purchase. So just remember that it's kind of similar to if you hold shares outside of an ESPP, uh, regular long-term capital gains rates if you hold something for more than a year. In this situation, you held it more than a year from the purchase date. So some of that's going to be long-term gains. Now on the flip side of that, same situation if you hold stock for less than a year after the date of purchase, that's going to be short-term rates. So in a disqualifying disposition, you can have long-term capital gains rates or short-term capital gains rates. And as you can see in my examples, you're going to pay quite a bit more in tax. And we're looking at not, not a whole lot of money in these examples. And the amount of tax is substantially more, 2,376 versus 1,701 um, in a disqualifying disposition with long-term and then versus the short-term here. But both of these are more, if we scroll back up, both of these are more than what you would pay in tax in a qualifying disposition. So you can run through these examples, take a look at it. It'll help you determine uh, the 
tax liability on ESPP shares whenever you finally sell them. Um, and then the last thing I want to look at and show you is this can really help you determine uh, if it's a qualifying or disqualifying disposition really quickly. This flow chart here, you know, just ask yourself this question, yes or no, and it will, you know, follow through this and it will tell you if it's a disqualifying, qualifying disposition. But as with anything in financial planning, you want to make sure that what you're doing and when you're selling the shares is what works for your financial plan. And then after you've determined what works best for you, then add the tax component to figure out how you can optimize your taxes and what you should expect from a tax liability. So I hope this was helpful. Check out the blog. I'll link to it below so you can uh, read through it and look at the examples. But um, if you have any questions, please reach out. Let me know. Happy to help.